Welcome to the first episode of a spin-off show we're doing as part of Wrestling with the Business. And it's a little program that we like to call Falls Count Anywhere. And this is a show where we kind of sort of take things out of the proverbial Wrestling with the Business ring. And we're going to talk about recaps. Well, we, normally we talk about recaps, rumors, personal commentary, news. And on this program, we're really more interested in talking about, you know, reviewing games, books, films, documentaries we might see. Um, we'll do deep dives into different uh, topics like the lore of wrestling, the language of wrestling, the culture, the history, really the things that make wrestling so deep and rich um, and, frankly, fun if you've been in it as long as we've been in it. Yeah. Um, we're going to talk about court cases, backstage drama, uh, company mergers, controversial characters, and of course the all too common top 10 and bottom 10 lists that everyone seems to have in their heads. Um, so yeah, those are just a few examples of the kind of things that we're going to cover. We're going to try to put out roughly one episode a week. It's going to be between 10 and 30 minutes, sort of targeting that 20 minute sweet spot. So uh, if you think that kind of thing is for you, and I'm sure if you already watch Wrestling in the Biz with the Business, it is, uh, give us a like and a subscribe below. Um, well, now that that's done, let's dive into episode one. So um, I did something really interesting that I don't think anybody has yet to do, and I have gone off the reservation, as it were, um, into the age of technology, and I've contributed to the intelligence of Skynet. <laughs> which is something I was putting off for a long time. For a long time, I hadn't touched. <laughs> for a long time, I hadn't touched Chat GPT or any of that stuff. I hadn't fooled around with any of it. Um, but when this idea popped into my head a couple of weeks ago, I just couldn't say no. And when I looked on the internet, I saw that basically nobody had done anything like this, and I could not believe it. It was probably the first original thought I've had in my entire life. Um, so I want to give a quick uh, hat tip to Wrestling Bios, the Wrestling Bios YouTube channel. Um, I had the idea to do this months ago, like I said, but I did a search for it, and I found a similar video, which was your video talking about WWF versus WCW fantasy booking for the summer of 98. And what you did is you really helped me um, refine my questions and my requests down to really speed things up. So hat tip to you. Thanks for helping me out with that. So what I asked ChatGPT to do was to fantasy book a WWE versus AEW pay-per-view event hmm. for this summer. Wow. Um, yeah, and I'd love to get your take on it, um, Matt, just because you're kind of the, the resident AEW professional, uh, expert. I could talk to the other guys about it, but they don't know nearly as much about it. So um, I'm going to read you the prompt that I gave ChatGPT, and then I'm going to read ChatGPT's response. They do include some title matches, but because the titles don't really line up, it doesn't really seem pertinent. But mm -hmm. we'll just go match by match. I did ask it to write a brief description of the match, which I will read as well, and um, maybe just talk about each match. Um, as it goes. Right. So this is what I wrote to chat. This was the prompt that I wrote chat GPT. Quote, fantasy book and create a full report on a WWE versus AEW dream pay-per-view that takes place in the summer of 2023. Use historical data to report on match outcomes. Use real data from previous wrestling matches to determine what happens in each match. Let me know how long each match is and be as detailed as possible when describing what happens in each match. Let me know the venue for the event and include some details about some promos that happened during the show and also report on which company, WWE or AEW, was better at the show. Wow. So I did that and it spit out, I think, one or two promos in six matches. So then I said, okay, rewrite this pay-per-view to include four more matches and two more promos because it just seemed too short. Mm -hmm. And create a name for the event and your <laughs> answer needs to be more detailed. Because it had given me some detail, but I wanted more. Wow. So this is a slightly edited, a selectively edited, because I had to get some of the junk out of there. Um, but this is what it would be. So um, the event name, Battle of the Titans. Ooh. 
is the battle. That's name. pretty good. That's not bad, That's right? That's pretty good. They're doing it at Mercedes Benz Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia, which can hold up to 75,000 fans. Okay. So, huge venue. Yep. Which is what you'd need to have for something like that. Okay. The show opens with a promo. Of course. WWE's Roman Reigns opens the show, boasting about his dominance over the WWE roster and challenging AEW's top champion, Kenny Omega, <laughs> to a match for the Battle of the Titans main event. Wow. Omega responds with a promo of his own, proclaiming himself as the best wrestler in the world and accepts Reigns' challenge. Match number one. Charlotte Flair versus Thunder Rosa. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Starting out hot. The match begins with Rosa showing off her impressive technical wrestling skills, while Flair relies on her superior strength and athleticism. The match becomes increasingly intense as both women exchange stiff strikes and submissions. In the end, Flair counters a Fire Thunder driver mm -hmm. with a spear and wins the match, retaining her, champ retaining her championship. The match is 22 minutes and 13 seconds long. Whoa! That is a long... That is a long match. Women's match, certainly. I mean, it's yeah. a long match no matter what. Oof. But a women's match, that's very long for a women's match. That, that's pretty good. I could see that counter happening, her getting out of the driver, going into a spear. That's pretty good. Isn't it scary how just even the stuff that's like, um, you know, Rosa has impressive technical wrestling skills and Flair relies on her superior strength and athleticism. Like, mm -hmm. that's... Just scary yeah. accurate. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> making me happen. a little uneasy, actually. <laughs> you should be. <laughs> All right, so. <laughs> going to do that a lot you in know this what? episode. <laughs> Instead of making a comment every time you get that feeling, I just want you to do that. Just knock on the table. All right, so they open with a women's match. That's their curtain jerk. Mm -hmm. In theory, that's supposed to be the second ma best match of the night, right? Right. Okay, match number two. Britt Baker versus Bailey. Oh, Okay. This is, this is what they write. Bailey takes control early on, targeting Baker's injured knee mm -hmm. with a series of vicious attacks. So Bailey's the heel. Baker fights back, however, and eventually catches Bailey with a lockjaw submission to keep the championship. Wow. 15 minutes and 42 seconds. Hmm. So it sounds like, yes, I mean, Bailey is definitely Bailey's the heel. The heel. And Britt has the uh, has the women's title, so good on her. What do you think about the injured knee comment? Um, Dated. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she's not currently injured. I mean, if it's going off of history, she's probably had some. She had a back injury, I know. I don't know about a knee, but. They could easily write maybe that Maybe it's in, predicting though. the future. Just have, ba yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, just have Bailey just work it in like the first couple of minutes she just right. works the knee or maybe they do like a no holds barred or something where she takes a couple chair shots or yeah, something maybe in her. the build up to the match bailey took her out backstage or something yeah all right hmm. not bad promo number two and i would guess this is maybe where the first hour ends somewhere around here aew's chris jericho Cuts a promo, oh, no. cuts a promo taunting the WWE roster and declaring that he and his fellow AEW wrestlers are superior in every way. Mm -hmm. He challenges he, he challenges any WWE wrestler to a one-on-one -on -one match at Battle of the Titans, claiming that he will prove once and for all that AEW is better than the company. Please say it's the Miz. You're gonna have to wait oh. because then we go into match three. Oh, this match is so. Seth Rollins versus MJF. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> okay. First of all, I'm going to open. Okay, this is a marathon. This is a 26-minute and 5-second match. Okay, this, wow. is, this is the longest match ever. <laughs> okay. Let's see what happens. Rollins and MJF put on a technical showcase with both men displaying their impressive in-ring skills. The match becomes increasingly heated as both men engage in a battle of words and wrestling moves. In the end, Rollins hits a curb stomp to win the match hmm. and retain the championship, which we don't care about. Technically, <laughs> this is for the Intercontinental Championship. Okay, that makes sense. I would love 
to watch the heat, the promo heat. Yes, that's exactly what I was thinking. In the weeks leading up to this, Mm -hmm. seeing MJF kiss his ring and Rollins, you know, the crowd singing Rollins' theme coming out. I mean, especially with the way that the Rollins character currently is, he's way more face, Mm -hmm. but he's kind of antic-y and he's kind of laughy. Oh my God. Yeah, the the laughing alone, MJF would tear that apart. The back and forth between the two of them in the weeks leading up to it, you could even have like Rollins kind of like doing like a gremlin thing where he's like setting traps and like just kind of being (laughs) a general, generalized nuisance Mm -hmm. to it. But Rollins goes over in the match, okay. Which I would not have called, no. But this was clearly like, the data was clearly before MJF won the title. Mm you know, if you go back a couple of months before he won the title, eh, it kind of makes more sense. Sure. All right, this one is, I'm going to start talking about championships now. This one is technically for the AWTNT championship. Mm-hmm. This is your boy, Kevin Owens. Nice. Versus Darby Allen. Ooh. Oh. Okay. That would be so good. <laughs> okay. Oh. And again, this is written so well. Allen and Owens engage in a fast-paced, high-flying match, with both men taking risks and put it, pulling out all the stops to win. In the end, Owens hits a pop-up powerbomb to win the match. Hmm. 1924. Okay, so we had uh, Flair win, then we had Britt Baker win, then Rollins, and now Owens. So WWE is up by one. WWE is up by yes. Four matches in. Three three to one, yeah. Yep. Hmm. 19 minutes and 24 seconds. Okay. So, again, just a really long singles match. But like, all of these could be main events. Absolutely. At, at any pay-per-view. So, Can, I, mean, I could see Kevin Owens building a tower of chairs and Darby just smashing right through him. Yeah, I mean, you... Torpedo dive. You have to make this some kind of a hardcore no disc maybe not a hardcore no dq but you gotta you gotta have tables you got mm-hmm. a tlc match yeah this would be a really good tlc there match. you go that would be the way to do it i think and the tnt t- oh so kevin owens is the aw tnt champion yeah that's the thing like that's wow. why i'm like that's why i'm like the titles don't really yeah like <laughs> okay let's scroll back here i guess so that would mean that okay that would mean that charlotte flair retains the wwe smackdown women's championship which makes sense. And that would mean that Britt Baker retains the AEW Women's Championship. Right. So, so this is the first interpromotional yeah. ch- um, title change. All right, match five. Hopefully you don't have to take a pee break. <laughs> this is a tag team match okay. for the WWE Raw Tag Team Championships. This is The New Day versus FTR. Okay. So a little dated on the data here. I think they did that in WWE, but because killer they, match. Because they do specifically mention Kofi Kingston mm-hmm. in the New Day. So the New Day and FTR engage in a classic tag team match with both teams showcasing their unique styles and teamwork. In the end, FTR hits a shatter machine on Kofi Kingston to win the match and become the new WWE Raw Tag Team Champions. Three-time Raw Team Raw tag champs yes yes that would be this is a funny one because they did recently move but wow. a for a tag match a very reasonable 18 minutes and 46 seconds yeah that's not bad so those two teams against each other lots of high spots very exciting who's the other new day tag team member biggie well he's been out with an injury for how long now i think that the assumption here is that, it's, that it's woods is that it's xavier hmm. woods because he's the only one wrestling I and mean, if he got kofi kingston in there Right. I mean, I, I don't. Based off of all the other data for the previous matches, I do not think that he would be included in this because he's been out for a year, right, or more. I mean, he's been, he's been gone for a long Just time. Just over a year, I think it is. Yeah. Much longer, hmm. and he's going to have to have an edge-like comeback. All right, promo three. WWE's Becky Lynch cuts a promo vowing to prove that she is the best wrestler in the world. Now this is where the algorithm kicks in. By challenging AEW's top women's wrestler, Thunder Rosa. Okay. To a match at Battle of the Titans. Who just lost to So now I'm kind of like Claire. Hmm. So and this is why I asked for more matches because this is basically the end of the show. There's one more match and that's the end of the first six matches. Right. So I'm like there's got to be more. Like we got to tie this up. So 
this one, I guess, would say you could call it like the first real mistake mm -hmm. in in the booking because yeah, Thunder Rosa's already wrestled a hell of a match and it really doesn't make any sense for her to come out and face right. Becky Lynch. But I do think, I mean, what would be better, Rosa versus Lynch or Rosa versus Flair? Ooh, probably. Ver I mean, Flair is the more, I guess you want to say, technical wrestler technically proficient wrestler but the fans will be way more interested in seeing lynch wrestler i think it would be an inter a more interesting match to have flair because it's a, a contrasting styles right you get to see kind of the strength versus speed or agility i guess yeah you kind of can tell that story a little bit easier hmm. um yeah no oh, so then let's fantasy book that even further then if rosa already had her match then who's Becky face. Sheeta, Riho, Nyla Rose. I don't think Riho and her would be a good matchup. I think Riho's good with anybody. Well, yeah, I mean she she's good enough. Like Rollins, she can make any like Flair, she can make anybody look good. She can mm -hmm. put anybody over. Um God, I don't know. I can't think of anything better than Thunder Rosa. No? Jamie I mean, Hater. Britt, Britt Baker, but I'm I mean, not going to bring her. Jamie in. Hater is the champ now. I'd go with her. Only if she agreed to lose the championship. Ooh. <laughs> Only if she agreed to lose it to <laughs> Becky Lynch. <laughs> Take it to the other promo. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Match six. So this technically was the main event. So let's. So this is another reason why I didn't want to end it. So the show opens with Kenny Omega getting called out. And there's no match. Oh, jeez. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, this is where, like, the algorithm, that's where you're like, okay, I'm not getting that. Same right. Because it's like, <laughs> you can't even finish your own story, dude. Okay. <laughs> World Tag Team, AEW World Tag Team Championships, the Usos versus the Young Bucks. Yep. That's the dream match right there. The Young Bucks and the Usos put on a tag team clinic. Of course. With both teams displaying their incredible athleticism and tag team chemistry. In the end, the Young Bucks hit a Meltzer driver on Jey Uso to win the match and retain wow. the World Tag Team Championship. Even knows the move names. It, Michael Cole's out of a job right now. <laughs> the question that I had and the question that I posted on Twitter that popped into my head when I originally created this fantasy booking... On a scale of Big Show to Shawn Michaels, how many super kicks would there be in this match? <laughs> oh, my God. There would be a billion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Imagine Shawn Michaels as special guest referee for this <laughs> match. Okay, you got to include that in here. Like, that's just insane to me. Like, there's, it would be super kick city. Mm -hmm. Super kick would just be called kick. It would be a super kick party. Yeah. That's what they want. Um, and I also didn't get a time on this match, but I would assume it's going to be at least 30 minutes long. Oh, yeah. I mean, this one's going to be a barn. And it'll be a ladder match. All right. So let's assume that we're only two hours into the show or maybe an hour and 45 minutes. We have four more mm, matches to go. I think longer than that. Four more, yeah, this is at least a four-hour pay-per-view. So let's say we're halfway through. So then I said, okay, add four additional matches. And it said, sure, here's four additional matches. Match number seven, Chris Jericho versus Brock Lesnar. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes. Now, the, the... Run your mouth, Jericho. The, <laughs> the assumption here is that Lesnar is carrying the Universal Championship. Okay. Which, while it doesn't line up with reality, does line up with what it said earlier because it didn't say anything about Reigns holding the Universal Championship. Right. Quote, <laughs> Jericho, who had earlier challenged any WWE wrestler to a one-on-one -on -one match, gets yep. his wish and faces off against the Universal Champion Brock Lesnar. The match is a brutal slugfest, with both men trading heavy blows and suplexes. In the end, Lesnar hits an F5 and retains the championship. So, of course. A couple of things to note here. One, 17 minutes and 56 seconds, which okay. is a marathon for Brock Lesnar. Absolutely. But it's very short by this the second shortest match, actually, of the night mm -hmm. by this standard. Um, and um, no nut shot, although he did go over. Right. Um, one thing, no outside interference in any of these matches. 
That's good. No outside. Inter- I mean, that's, that's good. Clean match. That's right? the that's way what it should be. Okay, this is where things, again, the algorithm kicks in a little bit here. AEW World Championship, this would be an incredible match, but it doesn't line up well with the story here. Kenny Omega versus Edge. <laughs> That's out of left field. Yeah. Wow. Edge returns to the WWE and challenges Omega. So the the, the framing here is that it's a surprise return. Right. Right. Uh, Roman couldn't make it for some yeah, reason. He sends out Edge. Yeah, right, yeah. Calls Paul Heyman, who says, oh, his plane got delayed. Mm-hmm. Who will step up? Edge returns to the WWE and challenges Omega for the AEW World Championship in a dream match for fans of both companies. The match is a back-and-forth affair, with both men pulling out all the stops to win. In the end, Omega hits a one-winged angel to retain his championship. And then Reigns comes in from the crowd and lays him out. Now, how old is Edge? 53, something like that. This is a 28-minute and 21-second match. Well, that was his match with Randy Orton at WrestleMania a few years ago. It is. Just would not end. It, it, it is. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was when they went, like, on the bus, right? Yeah. They went, the WrestleMania match they had? Yeah. yeah. That was a really long one. <laughs> um, that would be a good match, though. Oof. Match 9, WWE United States Championship. Damian Priest... Versus Sammy Guevara. Ooh, that's a good one. Priest and Guevara put on a high-energy, high-flying match that showcases their incredible athleticism. Mm. In the end, Priest hits a reckoning to win the match and retain his championship in a paltry 12 minutes and 44 seconds. Shortest match of the show. I mean, by far. Wow. I think the next shortest was the opener at 16-something. Mm-hmm. Very, very short match. Hmm. Classic big man versus small man, though. All that'd right, be, so That'd be fun to see. Let me ask you something. So no, we're coming up on match 10, the uh-huh. end of the show, okay? Just think for a second. What is this pay-per-view missing? Can you think of mm. anything? Trios titles. <laughs> <laughs> Hat tip Adam Perry. <laughs> match 10 is an AEW Casino Battle Royale. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> a battle royale featuring 21 wrestlers from both companies. Uh-huh. With the winner receiving a future AEW World Championship match, the final two competitors are... This is where the algorithm kicks in again. Hangman Adam Page. Nice. And Big E. <laughs> Surprise return. <laughs> Surpri- He's all healed up. Who nice. engages in a thrilling one-on-one battle. In the end, Page hits a buckshot lariat to win. And breaks his neck again. God damn the it. The battle royale. Jesus. And earn a shot at the AEW World Championship. <laughs> the entire battle royale lasts 28 minutes and 10 seconds. Yeah, that's a little short. Did it say who the other competitors were? It did not go oh, okay. through the other 40 Shit. competitors in the Battle Royale, but I would assume they would throw everything at the wall that they possibly could, and it would wow. be it would be whatever. How that's, would you rate that? That's a great card. How that's exa- something I would have written in my notebook back in 1998. No, oh, you wouldn't. God. Half of these people weren't even born then. <laughs> you know MJF what I mean. MJF was one year old. <laughs> you know what I mean. This is WCW, WWE, whole thing. Um, Who's missing? Who's missing from this card uh, that you wanted, that you would like to see? I mean, there's a lot of people missing, but uh, I mean, yeah. is there any specific, well, you, you know? You got the Bucks, you got, oh, Moxley's not on there. Moxley is not on, okay, That's so. That's surprising. Let's say that they wanted to do a Extreme Rules style. Who would go against Moxley? Oof. Who could go with Moxley? I mean, who in WWE has the wherewithal? Hmm. I don't, know. I don't watch WWE anymore. It's so going to sound even... really funny, but the only guy that I can think of that's kind of willing to kind of lay it all on the line to put a hell of a show together no matter what, that's willing to put a risk out there, The Miz. That's what I was thinking. I think The Miz would be willing to, to go for Or I think, you know, if you actually, you know, what about Finn Balor? Ooh, that would be a good one. That's right. He's not on there either. He might go for it. He's not on there. Actually, no Judgment Day. There's no Rhea Ripley. Mm-hmm. She's no not AJ on there. Styles. Uh, oh, AJ going against any of those AEW guys would be great. AJ would be good. No Ray Ray. Mm-hmm. 
you know. There's not a lot of high flying. I mean, there's a couple, you know, they Sandy, peppered in yeah. here and there, but there's no, like, you know, there's no Jungle Boy, mm -hmm. you know. Not everybody can get on the card, though. No, especially on a card like that. There certainly can't be any shame. Except for Thunder Rosa. She gets on there twice. <laughs> she, she gets on there. Yeah, and, and, and it's funny. She gets to get on there twice, and Roman Reigns doesn't get to get on there at all. Huh? Mrs. Plain. So... <laughs> But yeah, that's a hell of a teaser to open with that teaser, Roman Reigns versus Kenny Omega, just to have Kenny Omega pussy out. And no, then Roman to, Reigns pussy out. Or sorry, Roman Reigns pussy out and, and Kenny Don't Omega. Don't talk bad about to. Kenny. <laughs> I wouldn't dare do that. Well, I mean, I would give this five out of five stars. I don't care oh, where you put by it. by far, yes. But, uh, I Six mean, or seven out of five. Come Atlanta, on. Georgia, I think that they would be, uh, They'd be hot for it. bad shit crazy for something like that. Yep. And tickets would just be... I mean, it'd be WrestleMania times. Oh, yeah. It'd be twice the cost of WrestleMania. Ringside seats, you'd have to mortgage your house to get tickets <laughs> to that thing. But See green shirt guys sit up there. Yes, exactly, yeah. Then we'll know something's up. Then we'll know it's a glitch in the Matrix, and they're just literally paying. There's like five guys doing it, and they're just trading a shirt and just <laughs> shaving their face and wearing, you know, they're, that's what they're doing. So, well, that just about wrap things up for us here on Falls Count Anywhere. Um, I got to know, uh, which of the dream matches that ChatGPT came up with uh, would you guys like to see? And uh, what would your fantasy booking for AEW and WWE look like? Uh, sound off below. Uh, in the meantime, please like, comment, subscribe, show your love, follow us on Twitter, all the good stuff that we say every week. And uh, just keep up to date with the great content coming at you each week. And uh, as always, you keep watching. And we'll keep wrestling with the business.